So last year was a rough year for Nintendo Switch and 3DS emulation. We lost Yuzu and Ryu Jinx, the Switch emulators, and Citra, the 3DS emulator. And in 2025, when you visit the official site of CitraMU.org, you get this message from the team letting you know that the emulator has been discontinued. Well, I'm here to let you know that I have found a site that has the official build of Citra still up for download here in 2025. Now this is the emulator as it was before it was removed from the internet last year which actually it was in a good state with a high compatibility list and all of the features you would expect to have in an emulator. Now I have tested this download and it works and there are no viruses on it. Now I will leave the link to this page in the description below. And it says here that you will be able to download the latest nightly build of Citra from the official Citra developers, or you can download the latest Pablo MK7 Citra fork. Now, if we scroll down, you will see a download for Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android. We're on Windows, so we're gonna download for Windows. Now up here at the top, you're gonna find the download for the Pablo MK7 Citra fork. And at the bottom, you're gonna find the official Citra nightly build. I'm gonna download the official nightly build. Once you click on download, your download will start. Now, if you don't have 7-Zip already installed on your PC, you're gonna need this to extract the emulator as well as your ROMs. Now here is the Citra download, I have saved it onto my desktop, you guys can save it wherever you like, whether that be an SSD, external SSD, external hard drive, it's up to you. Just make sure that you back up this file. Now if you already have 7-Zip installed, go ahead and right click on that file, go to show more options, 7-Zip, and extract the Citra windows. That will give you a new folder containing all of your extracted files. You no longer need the zip folder, so you can delete it or you can keep it. Now, I cannot tell you here on YouTube where to download Nintendo 3DS ROMs, but if you check out my Patreon page, link in the description below, I may have some videos there that can help. Now, when you first download a ROM, it's going to be in a compressed format. Here I have Super Street Fighter 4 that needs to be extracted. To extract the ROM, we're going to use 7-Zip as well. Right click on it, show more options, go to 7-Zip and extract here. Now there's my extracted ROM. We no longer need the zip file, so we can go ahead and right click on that and delete it. Now if I right click on that ROM and go to properties, you can see that my type of file is 3DS file. And all of your 3DS ROMs must be a .3DS file type to be playable in Citra. Now let's open that Citra folder and we're gonna open Citra QT. And there we are, we are now in the official build of Citra. Now I'm not gonna go through and set up any of the settings, I'm just gonna load up Street Fighter 4 to show you that this emulator works. So let's go up to file, load file, go to my desktop, and select Street Fighter 4. Now if you just needed a new link to download the emulator, you now have it. If this is your first time using this emulator, then continue watching and I will show you all of the settings I use. From here out, I will play my old video from last year since this is basically the same build as that one was. So when you first open the emulator, you're gonna see this big plus folder logo. Under it, it says double click to add a new folder to the game list. So we're gonna go ahead and do this first, add our games to the emulator. Now let's go ahead and click on that plus folder and I'm gonna locate that folder that I have on my desktop that contains my 3DS games. And then hit select folder. And there we are, all three of those games I had in that folder are now in the emulator. Now let's go up to emulation, configure, and let's go down to graphics. For the internal resolution, you could turn your graphics all the way up to 2400p at 10 times, but I am not using a 4K monitor, so I'm not gonna take advantage of that, and I'm just gonna do six times at 1440p. Under layout, you'll see screen layout is gonna be on default. As you know, the 3DS has two screens, so you could change your screen layout to a single screen, large screen, side by side, separate windows, a hybrid screen. Once we get into some gameplay, I'll show you guys what each one of these look like. Now let's go over to Advanced, 
and for the graphics API, we're going to change this from OpenGL to Vulkan. You will have a much better experience with this emulator using Vulkan. Unless your PC has a really dated CPU and GPU, then you may want to come back here and try OpenGL if Vulkan doesn't give you a great experience. And if your computer has an actual graphics card, make sure that physical device is your actual graphics card and not your CPU's graphics. Everything else, we're gonna leave at default settings. Now let's go down to controls. Now I have tested an Xbox One, Xbox Series, and a Nintendo Switch controller with this emulator, and all three controllers work. The controller I am using now is a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. Now there are two ways that you can set your controller up. The easiest way is to come down to auto map. After pressing OK, press any button on your joystick. So I'm going to push OK. And now I'm just going to press any button on my Nintendo Switch Pro controller. And as you see, it just mapped my entire controller out for me. Now by using a Switch controller, my face buttons X, Y, A, and B will be in the same layout as a 3DS. If I was to do that auto map with my Xbox controller, my face buttons would be reversed, meaning the Y button on the Xbox controller would be X, the X button would be Y, the A button would be B, and the B button would be A. Now if you want a custom layout, then you can come down here to clear all, and every button will be reset. And to map these buttons out, you could just click inside of the box next to the button you want to lay out, so we can do A and we can press whatever button on our controller, we want to be the A button, and you would just repeat that for the directional pad, circle pad, C stick, shoulder buttons, and so on. And if you are unfamiliar with a 3DS button layout and you're wondering what is a C stick, well that's gonna be this little button over here in the right corner. Now it's not an analog stick, but it does slightly rotate up, down, left, and right. And this over here will be your circle pad. So if you are doing a custom layout by knowing these two buttons, we'll help you out. Once you have your controller mapped out, we're going to go up to new and we're going to name this controller layout. I'm just going to call it P1 for player one. Okay. This way we don't have to remap these controls. And if you want to know what the hotkeys are for this emulator, then up here next to input, you have hotkeys. You can check these button commands out and take advantage of these in game. Once you are finished here, come down to okay. Now let's load up a game and I'll do Sonic Generations. Now to show you guys the different screen layouts, you want to go up to view, screen layout. So the first one is single screen. This one, which is my favorite, is large screen. This is hybrid screen. This is side by side. And this is separate windows. Now I'm gonna switch back to large screen. Now if you wanna go full screen, then all you wanna do is hit the F11 key and you'll go into full screen. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.